All right, everyone, welcome back to an exciting Friday night magic recording we have here from you. It's uh, Sako now, and I'm here with Brandon Barrett. We're going to be bringing you some coverage from our most recent Friday night magic. Hey, guys, what's up? Yeah, here so we... this is going to be a pretty cool matchup here. Uh, Green Red Monsters, which is a pretty powerful deck, just coming off a, a top finish in GP Memphis, if I'm not mistaken. And Falcon's going to be playing the classic Blue White Approach of the Second Sun. Kind of noticing now both of these players looking like they're mulliganing here, going to six. I don't really necessarily know who that's going to give the advantage to. Neither of these decks really want to do that. Um. Well, Norbert, I think, actually has an advantage, at least when it comes to mulliganing. Um, just because he doesn't need a whole assortment of cards to at least get a combo like Falcon here on the right. All right, and the Earthshaker is going to be the first card to hit the field here. Scott Hayes swings in for two. He's going to need to get as much damage in as fast as possible if he truly wants to stave off Approach of the Second Sun being cast. Well, that's definitely what that deck wants to do. Yeah, so many options, though. He's got to fear Settle the Wreckage. He has to fear Fumigate. There's a real fine line he has to tread between overextending and getting enough damage through. Well, right now, because of how early it is, I think Norbit's game plan here is just to uh, get in as much damage as he can before uh, Falcon starts answering him. Yeah, so he is going to reveal another Merfolk Branchwalker with that Explorer, and he leaves it on top, and Cycles cast out the end step. That passes his turn. Norbit's going to see, am I just going to come at you with this damage here? Do I have some more? Hits his fourth land drop. I think he's missing on red mana. Because another deck plays Chandra, I believe. Boom. Now he hits that second one with the sheltered ticket. Branch Walker will get there with them explore triggers. Definitely gets you your land drops you need. And if not, it gets more attack. <laughs> All right, he's going to farm the more powerful of the Merfolk Branch Walkers, and he's going to take another two from Kenra. Going the distance, dealing, I believe, six damage now at this point to him. And what's great is even if he does pop a Fumigate, Kenra's going to come back later in the game providing some more value. Here you go, Norbert, uh, cycling on his end step just to Sur try to find another card, I guess. Surprising. You thought he would have wanted to keep that second red mana source, but he's content on waiting. Maybe I'm wrong. He does, doesn't need them. Mm. There's a settle that hurts. Ouchies. But that's going to find him that red mana. Maybe that's why he wasn't <laughs> so worried. And Norbit with the hard reads. Norbit's a really good player. He can, I don't know, he just gets there. <laughs> Truly, if I'm not mistaken, he's a modern player as well. I see him playing some a lot of mid-range decks like Abzan and also Jund now, most recently. I think that's his like favorite cliche or like favorite niche of uh, archetypes, at least. Mid-range. Well, kind of seeing him with a more aggressive build in standard, though. Um, he definitely, I think, goes for the more aggressive mid-range decks, like uh, back when uh, Teamer Energy was a popular deck. Um, I know he plays Jund in Modern, that's also a very aggressive mid-range deck. Um, Throws out another Kenra. And we are seeing, he's opting for a more passive strategy. Looks like he ha is sitting on, is that a Glorybringer? Or a I think he's mentor? got a Braids in his hand. A Braid, okay. Yeah, it doesn't really hit anything at the moment, especially no. since they don't play artifacts besides Torrential. Well, it will be nice to get that torrential body off the field late game. He is threatening it at the at this very moment. And well, does he have it? The good thing about control is uh, basically you can wait. You don't have to worry about your life total as much because Falcon, I'm sure, has answers in his hand. He's just not using them. Ooh, and Norbert has the rekindling Phoenix, but you're seeing he's opting to take the slow route. He does not want to allow a Fumigate to completely wipe him. But Approach is going to come out, and Red Green is not going to have much to say about him casting any spells at all, really. I think that's uh, one thing Norbert kind of was expecting. Like, maybe he's going to have a land drop into Approach here. Um, especially with him wanting to be aggressive, you don't want your creatures to be countered, especially after they got board weight. All right. So now he has a chance to get the Phoenix safely on the field. We'll see if he opts to do it. Uh, right now is the best time, if ever. Oh, yeah. Here it comes. That's going to be a thorn in the side. Although a cast a cast out is a really easy way for this uh, blue-white approach deck to just cancel its revival ability. Just make it a lame old phoenix. No more rekindling. Definitely makes your removal uh, very, very bad. Mm -hmm. But he's not so much afraid of a fumigate right now, which is a great feeling against this deck. What is he doing? Oh, never mind. There is the fumigate. There is the fumigate. <laughs> 
but cute little phoenix tokens gonna come out and give birth to another copy of the worst thing that uh, Norba can see now is a farm he's got that three mana up I'm sure he's got another answer but uh, he's gonna need more than that to deal with this phoenix so is that I mean it'll still come back this turn won't it uh, it'll it. come back on his next upkeep but uh, you can only deal with it for so long yeah I see um, like, I mean, even if you have enough removal spells I guess it matters and Norbert is sitting pretty on mana after that and settled the wreckage earlier. What did he just play? Looks like he... I'm not entirely sure. And it looks like there's a Masterpiece Gear Hulk in his graveyard now, so... Something that allowed him to either discard or... He didn't have a search for his hand. I wonder why he... I have no idea what he just played. Yeah, well, we'll have to leave this one up to the viewers at home to be a little sleuth-like and leave in the comments if you can tell what he did that turn. Either way, Glorybringer hits the field. Ooh, commit to memory. Card's really good in dealing with things. Say so. no, 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 slowing you down. Commit's a really cool card because that one set you can actually send it back to the hand before the creature enters the battlefield. Or it actually goes area. second to the top of their library. So oh, yeah, send it back, spin it up onto their deck. Correct. So the card's really good, especially against like creatures like uh, uh, Carnage Tyrant because it can't be countered. You're not actually countering it. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to see it for the next two turns, which is really good. Yeah, a really interesting thing about it is the hexproof is not going to work until the creature's on the battlefield. It doesn't. It's not hexproof while it's a spell. Oh, here we oh, go. Oh, too slow. Gets the second approach out. The hash hip oasis was not enough to bump his creatures to a high enough level. Oh man, he's sitting on two magnus rays and a brain in hand. Yucky. Well, we're going to see those come out. Perhaps he's going to opt for something like shocks or lightning strikes just to be able to put more damage straight to his head. But I really can't think of great options that this deck is going to have in its sideboard to even help with this. Um, I expect him to maybe bring in like uh, Chandra's and maybe a Carnage Tyrant. Uh, answers that, or cards that uh, control decks really need an answer to right away. Uh, maybe even Death Gorge Scavengers uh, to get rid of stuff out of the graveyard so he can't, like, two turn them back up with uh, Torrential. Yeah, interesting. I'm not sure how, how close uh, Norbert's build is to the one that topped in, G in Memphis, but I, some of them have been known to splash black. I don't think his version is doing that for Scrap Heap Scrounger. And also, I didn't see a... Uh, I did not see a Heart of Kirin or any vehicles coming out, so... Perhaps those are lurking in the sideboard to help put a little more pressure in on approach. I think the vehicles are actually pretty good because they're going to dodge Fumigate. That's actually a really good point. I actually haven't thought about that. And mm -hmm. sometimes they can get even for more damage. I'd rather swing with a 4-4 Heart of Kirin than a 3-2 uh, uh, Merfolk Branchwalker. <laughs> Truly. Alright, well game one going to Falcon. Approach the second zone is really tough for a lot of creature-based decks to deal with. Honestly, if you don't have black or blue, it's a really hard matchup for you. Because you're not going to have duress, you're not going to have negate, you're not going to have access to lost legacy, uh, cards that really can help cripple and slow down approach. I know I personally feel I need that answer just to beat them, usually, and I play control as well. Yeah, I mean, I feel like white, black, I mean, white, uh, green, and red are kind of at a loss to deal with all of the counterplay that this deck has. Um, Falcon, I think, uh, he's definitely going to obviously stay on the approach plan. It's his best win condition since it gains some life, and it also wins on the spot. If he casts the cycle one. Um, Cards like Blossoming Defense or, or Heroic Intervention are kind of good options for Norbert. Now, come to think of it, uh, giving your creatures Hexproof and Indestructible in the latter one I mentioned. So that's good. that'll save you from Fumigate, but nothing can help you from Settle the Wreckage in red and green, I don't think. Yeah, that's a good point. I know, I know actually... There might be another card I would hope Norbert plays. Um, uh, Serp Apart, Prowling Serp Apart. Oh, yeah, that's a great one. Um, because one problem Norbert has to deal with is even getting his creatures on the battlefield that's uh, true. to let them resolve. I don't even think one got negated last game. It was all removal. Um, I think Norbert was... Or scattered, excuse me. Uh, he, I mean, he might have not had them in play. I know he cycled the land that first game, um, but I just assumed he was playing around counter spells. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I can expect Falcon to bring in is more creatures to actually deal with them. Uh, mm -hmm. Like Regal Caracal, for example. 
super strong card. We've seen matches here where a control deck gets those kitties out and they bump themselves up to 70 life in no time. Pretty um, wild. Well, like, sometimes, like, I'm not sure how many Fal Falcons running, but usually approach runs at least a three of. Um, but if you can't find them, and with the amount of draw spells, sometimes that happens. Variance is still a cool thing. Right. But uh, he needs to slow down uh, Norbit somehow. Uh, he actually might be also bringing an authority to the consoles. That's another way to slow Excellent. him down. And like a repeat of game one, he's getting his Kenra in nice and early to sneak some damage in before he gets too much on the board. Looks like he just drew another one, actually. Pretty good. Surprised he didn't play it, though. Norbert's smart. He's always going to do a lot of his plays in main phase, too. But, oh, Oof, he gets green. scatter. Goes for the Ronus. That card can mean a big difference in this matchup, which is going to be safe from the Fumigate. I mean, I guess he's just trying to hit his mana curve there. I think that was a good play, but sometimes you got to play around these things, even sensor, Extremely as watched. bad as it sounds. Yeah, as we said, we didn't see the Essence Scatter game one, so perhaps he didn't think he had him in there. But I'm sure after post-sideboard, that card's definitely going to be in against any creature deck. I think Norbit needs a land here. I oh, don't yeah. see any lands in his hand. Yeah, and it looks like multiple copies of Glorybringer, perhaps? Ooh, Supreme Will. You know, like... And he's not going to let him dig. Oh, he decides to draw with it? Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. All right, so it looks like the explore is going to happen here. We'll see if he can dig down for the land. Maybe he's just trying to dig for more answers, or... I assume that's what he's doing, or at least an approach. Ooh, another glory bringer on top of his deck. I have a feeling this one's getting thrown into the yard. Yeah, because he needs that fourth... He needs to not miss his land drops. All right, he has five damage on board. That's going to be pretty solid pressure. I'm imagining the Fumigate might come out now. No, he One decides to pass. It's uh, two white and three colors. Oh, truly. Which Norbit's probably not going to over... Takes it Overextend here because he's going to probably assume the Fumigate's coming next turn. Brings it to nine. Oh my gosh, it looks like he does have an approach in hand, which is going to be extremely helpful. Oh, here's a pull from tomorrow, too. Wow. That, card's that was the card game. he cast last game. That we. That's why he discarded the Torrential Gear Hole. Oh! Pull from tomorrow's a really good card. I'm surprised it's not played more. Yeah. And here comes the Fumigate now. What does he have in response to this? This is interesting. What is he tapping? Oh, struggle to survive. He doesn't want. He doesn't want Falcon to gain life. So, he, what struggle to survive says? Uh, struggle says you deal um, damage equal to number of lands to target creature. Excellent. And uh, let's see what that second half of the card does. That might be a uh, helpful. I believe it shuffles all your graveyard back in. Nice, and that's actually going to have a little bit of utility, which is going to kind of neuter Torrential Gear Hulk. Um, I believe he's also playing Ipdu Rivulet. I mean, I don't see it as a possibility of him going for this, but it also helps against milling. All right, now, Jade Light Ranger going to net him a counter and a land for turn. So now his Glory Bringers are going to be live next turn. Oh, there we go. That's a good mana curve. There's Faker Kenra sneaks in. Let's hope he can get there. He needs a couple more turns to get this. Falcon might get it too, though. And all it takes is for a little more time. We know he has the single copy, at least, of Approach in his hand now. The answer does he have a Torrential and maybe a Settle in his hand? Man, the yeah, settles the scariest card you see right now because you want to go in with Glory Bringer next turn so badly. Let's see if he's feeling ballsy enough to go for it. Glory Bringer live. He also has a Hashep Oasis in hand, which might give Let's some see. helpful pump next turn. Um, Jade Light Ranger, that's a 2 1 1 enters, right? Yes. So right now he's got 5 power on board. He needs a Glory Bringer to win. He goes for it. Goes for the win. Is he going to run into a settle the wreckage? I think we're going to expect a torrential right now. Oh, or a cast out. That does work too. It's a permanent answer, really. Mm, he had game on board, wasn't enough. Falcon's going to have to do something now. I guess he's going to cast the approach, though. That is going to give him a little like more maybe time. Maybe one or two turns. No. Oh, few. Oh, that's a good answer, too. Which is also going to help him gain a little bit of life here. So I think there might be some Eternalize options next turn. Norbit needs to draw something. A Braid and whatever he just drew isn't going to yep, get there. Yep, goes for Eternalize. 
I never thought about that. <laughs> Takes the damage, brings him to one life. If he has the second approach, it's over right here, though. No, he can get there. Approach gains seven life, too. Unless uh, yeah. more of a top deck something. Oh, man. Got him by the skin of his teeth right now. I don't know. If I was Falcon, I would either pray to have a settle in his hand. Oh, yeah. Or cast approach. He could probably afford approach, but what is that? He's at a 4-4 four, four still when he's eternalized, I believe. Yeah, four, he becomes four. a 4-4. Four, four. Um, so, man, any of his haste creatures. Another Kenra. Actually, he can just eternalize Kenra next turn for game if he doesn't have an answer to at least um, one of them. Basically, Falcon has to... Uh, actually, approach doesn't even save him here. No, because he'll take a solid 8. Yeah, he needs to answer this. Otherwise, he's not winning. Taking a while to think about it. Might just be realizing his doom. Oh man, if I'm not mistaken, he has double copies of Approach in his hand. Yeah, usually, uh, I think if he, instead of fumigating the other turn, I think if he had approached, he would have been fine. But, uh. He had to be fearful, though. This opts not to eternalize, just going for game. Uh, oh, that could have been a misplay. I don't know if he had more answers. Does it still go on the second from the top? It's eternal. It should get It's a token, yeah. Yeah, it's a token. Norbert knows. Norbert knows. <laughs> He's one of the cleanest players I've ever seen. He passes his turn. Ops not to eternal. Oh, because he has haste. There's no point in eternalizing it that mm -hmm. turn. Unless yeah, he already swung. Mm, this is where he might regret not eternalizing it, though. Because if he has something like a glory bringer in hand, he might have been able to end the game right here. Um... Because if you get the damage on board last turn... He needs something. I don't know what, but he needs something. Gonna bring himself back up to 8, buy him even more time, but like I said, I think he has the he has the next approach in his hand right here. Looks like he just has a braid and struggle to survive. I think he's going to have to eternalize this right now. Mm. Well, if my eyes don't deceive me, could, it's not uh, going to be enough. One thing, like, it... it Sounds like a bad idea, but it's one way to answering it, unless Falcon has another approach in his hand, is you could always survive, and then sh each player shuffles their library and graveyard. Hmm. Well, that's what he's doing. It's a trick. That's a uh, trick usually done with Field of Ruin. Uh, yeah, that's really great. Top. Take notes, people at home. There's a lot of interesting cards that can keep your opponent from digging down for that uh, copy of Approach they buried six cards deep in their deck. Field of Room being one, as he just mentioned. But I think if my eyes didn't deceive me, yeah, he just has the second yeah, approach. Nor Norbert was just banking on him not having it, because sure. uh, that's all he could do at that point. And that's, a that's tough. Tough to lose like that. But we Blue White Approach doing what it does best, handling creature deck as assaults. Surprised we didn't see uh, more control, more uh, of the approach decks in the top eight at Memphis. Seems like it has a good matchup against the winning deck. Um, I think Approach is 100% favorite against any aggro decks. Uh, oh, now we're going to see some of the sideboard choices. You were exactly right about the Carnage Tyrant. Carnage Tyrant's a great answer to any control deck. Uh, unless they have Settled, they cannot deal with it, usually. Unless they unfavorably block with, like, Torrential and something else. Yeah, didn't see the Chandra. That would have helped him get some advantage. Chandra's pretty tough for those decks to deal with. I think besides cast out they and or attacking with a Gear Hulk, they really have no way of getting through it. Um, usually what I mm, what people will do against other control decks is basically you have to do something they can't answer like Corner Tyrant, they can't really answer it on the stack unless they have maybe a commit to memory um, and then Planeswalkers themselves can just sometimes win the game. <laughs> he did have the heroic interventions look at that. That's a good call man. Uh, Heroic's really really good all right, well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this match from our last Friday Night Magic session at Neverboard Gaming Community. Have a great night, guys.